If you're selling digital images, it can be frustrating and time consuming to try to find high quality raw images to extract your digital illustrations from. So in this video, I've got vintage magazines that we can take a look at. In this example, I'm gonna be using Boy's Life, which is a magazine that was published around 1911, and I'm gonna be using the public domain, so I'm only looking at really old issues here. These are mostly like Boy Scout magazines. There's like hunting, fishing, sports. I'm gonna be going into this magazine right here. I'll put a link in the video description. These are free and these are public domain because they're so old that the images themselves are inside the public domain. So when you first get into the page, it's gonna look like this and you've basically got a slider along the bottom that you can move along and that will go into the magazine itself or you can use the page back and the page forward button, which is right there. So I'm just you know, flipping through these magazines. I do wanna point out full warning, these are really old magazines and occasionally you're gonna see something that by our standards today could be a little bit weird or racist or sexist or just not appropriate. So I just, I wanted to point that out that as we look at old magazines, just don't be totally shocked if you see something that is out of time and isn't appropriate. However, in this example, I'm going to be going right to page 38, and I'm going to be finding this image right at the top right, which is two boys in a barrel boxing. I don't remember doing this as a kid. However, uh, I guess this is a popular activity back in the olden days. I'm not so sure. But anyway, there's two boys in a barrel beating the crap out of each other. So I'm going to extract this image and all I'm really gonna do is I'm just gonna right click and you have to kind of monkey around on the page a little bit because you're gonna get the save page as, but if you go up here to the top, you can go to open image in new tab. So I typically go right up here, you can see the cursor changes. I go open image in new tab and then I click on the image and it's right here. So this is my image. I can click on it, it gets a little bit bigger. Zoom in, zoom out. I'm using Mozilla, but you could, same sort of thing with Google Chrome. And I'm going to right click now and I'm gonna save the image to my hard drive. Now I'm saving the whole page to my hard drive, but I'm gonna extract out this image. All right, next up now I'm in Photoshop and I've got my entire page selected. I've just opened it up, it's a JPEG file. I'm just gonna to go to my selection tool. I'm gonna to zoom in here a tiny bit and I'm going to just select my image. So using the selection tool right there, and I'm going to click image and crop. That's gonna give me just my image, and now I can save this as a JPEG file. If you're using Affinity Photo, it's pretty simple here to crop an image as well. Slightly different, on the left-hand side, there's a crop tool. It's about fourth down on the left-hand side. You'll see this now become kind of a grid, and then you just simply move these grid icons right to there, click enter, we can see now the image has been cropped. We can just save this now as a JPEG file. And if you're screaming into the iPad, but Zen, I don't have any fancy software, that's okay. Using Paint, which is an application right inside of Windows, you can see here I've got this image opened. I'm gonna use the selection tool right in Paint. I'm gonna select this little box right there, and I'm gonna go up here to the top and select Crop. Exact same thing. Now I can do File, Save, and I can save this image now as a JPEG file. Okay, step two is to go into Inkscape. Now I'm using Inkscape 1.2, and if you're not sure what version you're using of Inkscape, go into Help and About Inkscape, and it'll pop up. Here it says Inkscape 1.2. That's the newest one at the time of this recording. I'm gonna to go to File and Open. I'm gonna pick my cropped image. It's going to ask me now if I wanna image DPI from file or default, I'm gonna pick from file and image rendering mode smooth, which optimizes the quality, and I'll click OK. There's my image. Now it looks a little bit fuzzy, and that's exactly why we're in Inkscape. We're gonna make a vector out of this and sell it as a digital file. So I'm going to go up here now to Path and Trace Bitmap, and you'll see a little menu comes up here on the right-hand side. There's a whole bunch of different options over here, but really we're just gonna use the defaults. We're under Single Scan, Brightness Cutoff, the threshold's 45%. I'm gonna leave all this other stuff alone, and I'm just gonna click Update Preview down on the bottom right-hand side. Now, if nothing comes up, you need to select the image. So you'll notice I haven't selected it yet. Now that I click it, the little arrows are gonna come up. Now, when I select Update Preview, ta-da, just like that, we'll see it's gonna come up there at the bottom. So a little troubleshooting there, just in case you're wondering where the image is. Now, from here, I'm gonna select Apply, and we're gonna get a trace right like that, pretty easy. I'm gonna move this off to the side, I'm gonna put this on here so I, we can take a good look. 
And this looks okay. There's a lot of items down at the bottom that I may not want. So I'm just going to clean this up. A couple options here we can do. I'm going to click Control Z, which undo, undoes things, undoes things. And we're going to go back to the beginning. So here's the original file. I can make this darker or lighter by changing the threshold. If I change it all the way to one and I click update, it's going to be black. I don't want that. If I click it all the way to zero and I click update, it's going to be white. In other words, nothing's going to be scanned. So I want something in the middle. I'm going to go about 55, let's say. Click update preview. I like the way that looks. I'll click apply and I can see now I've got myself a good looking scan. So you do need to monkey back and forth with the threshold. I'm going to click the original image and I'm going to click the delete key. That gets rid of the original image. Now I've got this. Now I can see something and I'm hoping you can see this too. I'm going to see if I've got any little stragglers, any little scans that are popping up here that I want to get rid of. To do this, I'm going to click over on the left hand side under edit paths by node. And you can see right there, there is a rogue cut. There's a rogue piece of the scan. The scan was so dark, it picked up an imperfection in the file. So I'm going to click on Edit Paths by Node. I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to click the Delete key. Just like that gets rid of it. I can do the same thing down here at the bottom. I'm going to go back here to the image and we can see this says Barrels of Fun. This was the scan. I want to get rid of this. So I'm going to click Edit Paths by Node. I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to click Delete. Just like that, we can clean it up. And I can do this as well with all the little stragglers. If I want, I can get rid of that stuff as well. So I'm going to click right there, clean. I'm going to highlight that, clean that up. And I could do this now to make sure my file maybe isn't as complicated as I want. You can see there I've got some stragglers right there. I'll click delete. So the highlighted images, if I click delete, will be instantly removed. So I like the way that looks overall. I may want to just clean it up just a tiny bit there. And the reason I'm cleaning this up is if you have too many nodes, it becomes unwieldy if you ever want to use it as a cut file. So the less nodes you can have, the better, but you don't want to sacrifice the quality of the image. So it's kind of a balancing act. Now, if you'd like to change the color of an image in Inkscape, it's pretty easy to do. There's a whole color palette down at the bottom. I could click, for example, bright pink, and that would change the image here. Bright blue, yellow, red. I'm just going to keep it as black. So from here, I'm just going to go File and Save As. And now what's going to come up is it's going to say, do you want to save it as a file type, Inkscape SGV. There's also an opportunity here to save it as a plain SVG. I would recommend saving it as an Inkscape SVG. It's the same exact file. The only difference is it's helpful for Inkscape if you save it as an Inkscape SVG. It just saves some metadata inside of it. So I'm going to save it as an Inkscape. I'm going to call it Boys Punching. And I'm going to save this now as an SVG file. I'm also going to go File, Save As. And I'm going to see what other types of files I can save this as. I'm going to save this, for example, as an EPS file. That's a different type of file. You can use this in Photoshop. I'm just going to simply click Save. Now, it gives me an EPS menu on what I would like to do. I'm just going to leave this as is. Embed fonts, rasterize, use documents. Resolution for rasterization, you may want to change to 300 just because that way you can sell these now as a 300 DPI photo or illustration, I'm going to click OK. And now it saves that as an EPS file. I'm going to go File, Save As. And I'm going to also save this as a DXF file. You can see right here, Desktop Cutting Plotter R12. I'm also going to extract this as a PNG file. You don't just click File and Save As to extract as a PNG. Instead, you go over here to the right. And there's a little menu item right there. It's about six from the top. And it's called Export This Document as a PNG. I'm going to click that. Now this export menu is going to come up and we're going to see all these different options. We've, you can export the document, the page, or the selection. In this case, I'm going to export the selection. And for the selection, I'm just going to shrink this down and I'm going to make my selection quite a bit bigger. We can see here the pixels is 500 by 500. I'm going to simply select it, the corner of the image, hold down the control key that locks in the aspect ratio. And you can see the width and the height are now changing as I make this larger. I'm going to do the same thing here on the top left. You can always zoom out again and you can redo this. So I'm going to zoom this out one more time and I'm going to extract this out. So it's quite a bit bigger image than I had originally. It's 5,000 by 5,000 or thereabouts. And now my DPI, I'm going to change this now to 300. 5,100 by 5,100 and it's 300 DPI. 
and I'm now going to click the export button. If you want to change where this is going to wind up, click the little file path right there and you can browse which directory you'd like this to go into. So here I've got my vintage magazine digital file path. I'm going to call this boys punching and this is going to be my PNG file. I'll click save. You can see it's exporting there at the bottom and now we've got a PNG file saved. And the very last piece of the puzzle here, I've got four files. I've got my SVG file, which is my vector, my PNG, which is my transparent background, my EPS, and my DXF file. I'm gonna sell these four as a bundle. So I'm simply gonna click all four files, and I'm going to go right click, send to compressed zipped folder. That's going to create a compressed zipped folder now that when I double click the zipped folder, there's my four items sitting inside of it. This compressed folder is what I'm going to list on Etsy or Creative Fabrica or wherever you sell your digital files. So when you sell a digital file online, you're really selling the zip folder that it contains the useful files for the client. I really hope you found this walkthrough helpful. I love vintage old magazines. I'll put a link to that old vintage magazine in the video description below. Lots and lots of issues to check out. Have some fun with it. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. I'd love to hear your questions and comments. Thank you so much.